Take your Bible this morning, the book of Job, Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5, if you will. Uh, been preaching to you on Sunday morning about being happy. What the Bible says about being happy, this is the fifth time I've preached on that. The Bible says a lot about being happy. And uh, I see a lot of people that aren't happy. Now, the reason people aren't happy, there's a reason folks aren't happy. Okay? And, and you say, well, it's somebody else's fault. Normally, it's our fault. Normally, it's our fault if we're not happy. And, and God's Word says some things to us about being happy. Now, this morning, when we read this verse, you're going to say, do what? But I want to remind you, it's in the Bible. All right? Job chapter 5. Are you there? All right? Look at verse 17. Behold, how happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Now, that's an unusual verse, all right, when it comes to being happy. Now, if I were to preach this message in children's church, there wouldn't be a lot of amens, okay? Because there's just not too many kids, you know, that get excited about being corrected. Uh, but the Bible says, notice, would you notice, behold, happy is the, what's the next word? Man. We're talking adult. We're talking adult. We're not talking little kids. You're, you're a man, all right? You're an adult. You're grown up. There's some teenagers in here. You think you're grown, all right? So, okay, then act like it then, all right? Yes, Happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. A uh, man, I confess, I remember, I never, never remember being happy when I was corrected as a kid. Amen. Especially when it involved chastening. Chastening. I don't know how they chase it. When I was a kid, we were not we were not treated to the Dennis the Menace method of correcting. Dennis the Menace, he's always, if you read that, <coughs> y'all do read the intellectual page from time to time, don't you? Uh, the only thing in the newspaper that makes sense is the funnies, okay, the comments. So uh, Dennis the Menace parents always put him in the corner, okay? Always put him in the corner. And, uh, Hey, my dad didn't chase me that way. My mom didn't chase me that way. They'd get out the belt, and, uh, man, we got a spanking. And I don't ever remember being happy. He said, I don't ever remember my brother and I, when we'd get in trouble because it was his fault, because it always was. Uh, but we'd get in trouble, and we'd get a spanking. I don't ever remember looking at him and saying, well, I sure am happy. I'm happy that we've been corrected, all right? Never looked at it that way. But you know the truth of the matter is I'm afraid it doesn't change much with age. Doesn't change much with age. We humans, as a rule, do not take kindly to being corrected. We don't like to be told what to do. Much less do we enjoy being told what we're doing is wrong. Man, we just don't go for that. We get upset. We get mad. We get bitter. Sometimes you see people storm out when they're correct. You hear things like this. Who do you think you are? Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> or, well, I guess you never did anything oh, wrong. Yeah. Or, well, of all the nerve. <laughs> And even today you hear people say, Well, I've got my rights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I say this to you? We're big on rights, mm -hmm. but we're little on obedience. Come on, come on. Right. Come on. We're big on rights, but we're little on obedience. But can I say this to you? You never have a right to do wrong. Amen. Right. You never exactly right. have a right to do wrong. Now you don't, I don't, nobody else does, aren't you? But all of that being said, the Bible still says happy is the man whom God corrected. If God corrects us, we ought to be happy about it. We ought to be happy. Now you say, well, why in the world? Well, let me give you, I, I want to explain why that's true. Number one, wrong needs to be erased, okay? 
wrong needs to be erased. The purpose of correction is to correct what is wrong. Now that's pretty simple, all right? Pretty obvious. I mean, everybody, I, when I said that, nobody said, I never thought of it that way. We understand that. The purpose of correction is to correct what is wrong because wrong needs to be corrected. And if you ever said, leave me alone, I'd like to go on in my ignorance and doing wrong. Just, just leave me alone, you know. I, um, I get tickled at these GPS things. You know, uh, that you, you have in your car, and you can plug it in the, you know, the cigarette lighter and put it up there and it gives you the roads and everything. And uh, I originally thought all of them had just a woman's voice, female voice. And, and ladies, I'm sorry, but I thought, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> all right. But I understand you can change it, you know, I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure those things out much, but I, I like it to get in there and, and, you know, you're driving along and it says, okay, the next, you know, your, the exit's coming up 500 feet. All right, turn around, you know, and, but the voice is, it, it's, it's very patient. You need to turn around or it's recalculating. And it's doing that and I can't help but think if they could program it every now and then to say, hey, stupid, are you listening to me, you know? <laughs> but, you know, the truth of the matter is we need correction sometimes. Hey, if you're going the wrong direction, isn't it good if somebody were to come along? I, I don't want to just keep going the wrong way. I don't know, just keep going the wrong way. And you, Well, I know this will eventually get me there. Yeah, all the way around the world, right? <laughs> But it's not going to get you there. Hey, if you're headed wrong, you need correction. And that, that's the purpose of correction because the wrong needs to be erased. Whatever it is, it needs to be erased. Now, if, if you're headed the wrong direction, that needs to be erased so you can get in the right direction, right? I mean, uh, my wife and I were, last year we took this exciting three-day vacation to Falls Valley, Oklahoma. Beautiful Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. We told people we were there and they said, why did you go to Paul's Valley? I said, it's a cheap motel room. All right. So uh, we went there and we were going to go over to Ada, Oklahoma, because I got a preacher friend that, that pastors a church over there. And I, we were going over to his church on Wednesday night and so I had one of those GPS, I plugged it in, you know, and plugged in the deal. So we're following. And we get up here to this sign. Get up to a stop sign. There's a road sign there that says Ada, straight ahead. My GPS says turn left. So like an idiot, I turned left. We went the scenic route to Ada, Oklahoma. <laughs> Now we got there, but we'd have been there faster if I'd have just followed the road sign, you know? And I don't guess you could say we were going the wrong direction, but we were going the long direction, you know? Hey, give me a map, all right? I'd really rather have a map. But if you're going wrong, need somebody to help you out. Hey, if you've if you got the wrong action, you, wanna, you don't want to go and just keep doing the wrong thing, do you? Look, if you're, if you're treating yourself and there's some kind of physical problem, you want, them to, you want them to treat you with the right medicine, right? I was at a meeting the other day and the, the preacher was given an illustration and he said, if you're going to the doctor and you're limping because you, you know, uh, you go into the doctor's office and you limp in and before you say anything, the doctor says, you need knee surgery. <laughs> You need knee surgery. I'll get you scheduled for knee surgery. And he said, I can tell because you're limping. And then finally the doctor allows you to speak and say, wait a minute, I've got a temperature, you know, 104 degree temperature. I'm here for that. See how bad your knee problem is? It's giving you a fever. <laughs> now you wouldn't go to a doctor like that, right? You wouldn't go in there and say, sounds like a smart guy to me. No, you wouldn't do that. You want to go to somebody that'll treat you right, okay? I, I, it's like the old deal. I remember the old uh, uh, the basketball globetrotters routine. 
you know, they, they've got old Metal Art Lemon over there and he's, oh, you know, and they've got him in there massaging his arm and massaging his arm and he's still going, oh, and they say, what's wrong? It's my leg. All right, you know. Hey, if you're doing the wrong action, if you're doing the wrong action, it's good to be corrected, right? It's good to be corrected. Hey, the wrong needs to be erased. You made a wrong decision. There's not any of us sitting here having made some bad decisions. We, we made them. The purpose of correction is to erase that wrong decision. To erase it, to correct that, all right? The wrong needs to be erased. Man, thank God we have a God that will correct us. Amen. And it's wrong and we want to erase that wrong. The second thing we ought to be happy about when we're corrected is because right is expected. Folks, I'm on, I, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this or not. If you haven't figured out it yet, I'm going to break it to you gently. God expects his children and his creation to do right. He, uh, that may be a great revelation, right? God expects us to do right. He expects that of us. My mom and dad, they expected me and my brother to do right. I've got two kids. I expected them and still expect them to do right. Do right. We got kids in Christian school. And we will go places. We'll do things. I expect them to do right. I expect them to do right. And, and listen, God expects that of us. And because right is expected, then correction is necessary so we can know what is right and therefore what is expected. Let me give you this illustration. In our, in our Christian school, we had Christian school now, this is our 41st year, and we've had a lot of kids through the years, and I've often had parents tell me, I know, I hope, I hope my child doesn't give you too much trouble. They'll, they'll come and say, um, are, there, are there any problems? No, there's not a problem in the world. Well, man, I don't understand that. Uh, we have all kinds of trouble. Man, they, they just give me all kinds of problems. You, you say, what's the difference? I think one reason is when the kids come to school, we set boundaries. Yeah, we lay down some, I know this is a, this is a terrible word, rules. We set down rules. And we lay them out, and there's the boundaries. We let the kids know this is what we expect. Right. And guess what? If you don't do it, you're going to be corrected. Amen. You're going to be corrected. And, and when you correct them when they're wrong, they immediately, hey, you know, they're not kidding. <laughs> they're not kidding about that rule. They mean it. Right. They mean it. It's not just posted for fun. They mean what they say. Hey, can I tell you this? What God says here is right. Yes, sir. He means it. Oh, yes. He means for you and I to live according to this book. Amen. To live according to what He has said. And if we don't, what He's going to do is correct us because right is expected of us. Right. He comes to us and says, I expect you to do what's right. Well, I didn't know. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. There's no excuse. Here it is. Well, I didn't know that. Now, I have kids at school try that. Well, I, I didn't know we could. I said, yes, you did. <laughs> Don't start that. You knew it. You knew that wasn't going to do it. Hey, can I just say this to you? Bad behavior is not cute. Bad behavior is not cute. Got our second grandchild. All right? Our second grandchild has been born. I had somebody ask me yesterday at that meeting we were at, the men's meeting we were at, I had a guy who knows me and known me for years. He said, oh, you, I guess you're going to go be, you got another baby, grandkid you can spoil. I said, not me. I don't want spoil grandkids. I don't want spoil. Hey, when they come to my house and they do stuff that's cute but it's wrong, we correct it. We don't go in there. 
because I found that two-year-olds, when it's cute, they do the same thing at 16, and it ain't cute at 16. You got to correct it when they're little. You correct them when they're young, and then they know what's expected. Folks, that's why God corrects us. That's why God corrects us. You know, you, you've tried you, you, you've tried to teach and you've tried to instruct and, and sometimes those kids still do wrong. You know, uh, they, I, I remember I've told this, you know, we, we sat down with our kids and you'd set this hot pot on the table and you say, watch it, hot, 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 you know. It's hot, watch how it'll burn you. Kids, what can you say? You know, they just got this problem. And it would be different except we're the same way, all right? And they got to touch it. I told you it was hot. I told you it was hot. And you say, well, I don't do that. Yeah, that's why you come to a sign that says wet paint, and you touch it to see if it is. You touch it, all right? Hey, listen, God has given us some instructions, and he's told us what's right. And when we do wrong, he corrects us. Why? So we'll know what's right. We'll know what's right. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to do what's right when I know what's right to do. Amen. You know, if I go to some fancy restaurant where they've got four forks and two spoons and you're going to have a 14-course meal, I'm in trouble. I don't know which fork to use. I don't know which one, all right? So I'm just going to sit there and watch somebody else and hope they're not like me. Right? But I want to do what's right. I don't want to do something goofy. I want to do what's right to do. God corrects us. Why? Because right is expected. The wrong needs to be raised. But wait a minute. Number three, and I love this one. The relationship is established by correction. Relationship is established by correction. I've told you, my dad, my dad was a good disciplinarian. My, my dad believed in kids doing what they were told to do. That's a weird thought in our day, in our culture, but it's true, and it's right, and it's good. And, and I, I use my dad as an illustration. I'm going to tell you, I love my dad with all that's within me. Loved him. And he taught us right, okay? But I found out he only corrected his own kids. He only corrected us. My brother and I, we'd be outside doing something. We were with a group. We got called in. We got a whipping. Well, whip them too! They're not my kids. They're not my kids. Hey, he didn't, he never spanked the neighbor's kids. But he'd spank my brother and I. You know why? The relationship. The relationship that was there. Uh, when God corrects you, that's confirmation you're his child. That's confirmation you're his child. And you are. You know, I, why? Because he corrects you. <coughs> he corrects you. This belief in what's known as the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, that's false. Yes, sir. Amen. That's false. God is not the father of everyone. Now I say, wait a minute, preacher, what are you talking about? Wait a minute, don't get mad with me. Um, I've got two kids. I've got two kids. Now, I love some of you the way I love my kids. But you're not my kids. Okay? You're not my kids. I've got two. You know how I got them? I found them under a rock. Amen. No, they were born into the family. They were born into the family. Listen, that's the way God becomes your father. Amen. When you're born into the family of God. We say, well, how does that when you're born into it? That's when Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. And until you're born again, you're not born into the family of God. Amen. Now you might be a member of the human family, but you're not in God's family until you get that second birth. Amen. 
And that's what the Bible teaches, okay? That's what the Bible teaches. But once you're there, there's a relationship. Go with me to Hebrews. Over in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Over in the New Testament. Man, you talk about happy to be corrected. Yeah, because I know it establishes that relationship. Uh, a father only corrects his own children. In Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 5. I want you to look at these verses with me, would you? What wonderful truths we find here in the Word of God. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten... All right, you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, for whom the Lord, what's that next word? Love. He chasteneth and scourgeth every, what's the next word? Son. Whom he received. Hey, listen. He corrects you because you belong to him. He corrects you because you belong to him. Uh, you know that you're you're his child. He corrects you because you belong to him. I started to say I've never spanked anybody except my kids. That's not true. I've spanked some other kids. All right. Uh, Miss Smith over here, Sue Ellen. I never spanked her, but I spanked her brother. All right? She was an angel. He was on the other end. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, but I, I spanked him. He said, well, why did you do that? Because I was standing in the position of the parent when I spanked her brother. All right? I was standing in the position of parent. Parent said, yep, you do that for us. And so I spanked him. Right, I spanked him. Now, and, and there were some others, but only in the position of the parent. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to just go down the street and say, that kid needs a whipping, and whip him, all right? If I did, I would not be standing behind this pulpit. I would be standing behind bars. All right? You can't do that. And that's a good thing. Amen. Wait a minute, though. Whom he corrected. You know who he corrects? Those that are his children. What a relationship. That confirms your relationship with the Lord when God corrects you. But not only that, it's proof that he loves you. It's proof that he loves you. When a parent says about a child, I just love them so much that I can't spank them. No, you can't. That means you don't love them as much as you need to. All right? Because the Bible said you, you correct the ones you love. Right. Listen, happy is the man whom God corrected. Why? Because I know he loves me enough right. to do it. I know he loves me enough. He cares about me enough to let me know when I am wrong. Right. Happy is the man whom God corrected. Hey, he loves you. Yeah. He wants the best for you. He wants the best for you. He said, Preacher, you talk about spanking your children. Why did you spank them? Because didn't want them to grow up to be a hoodlum and go to jail. Right, exactly. Didn't want them to grow up to be some kind of punk. Right. I want them to grow up and learn to respect people. Yeah. I want them to respect property. Sure, so I corrected them. I wanted them to have that respect. Hey, I'm glad my dad loved me enough and my mom loved me enough to correct me. But wait, I'm so glad my heavenly father Amen. loves me enough to correct me. Right. I'm happy. Now, wait a minute. I didn't say the chastening was fun. But I said I'm glad he loves me enough. Right. Amen. I'm happy that he corrects me. Why? Because it establishes the relationship. You with me? Hey, listen, number one, wrong needs to be erased. Correction does that. Right needs to be, all right? Right, it, it's so important that, that we know what right is, so correction does that. Helps us to know what's right. Hey, correction establishes that relationship. I know he loves me. I know he loves me. I know I'm his child. And he corrects me. Happy is the man whom God corrected Number four, 
righteousness is exalted. Righteousness is exalted. If you could, would you turn back to Job chapter 5? I want you to see. And, and you, I could quote it to you. I could read it to you. I could say it. But I want you to put your eyes on it. All right? I want you to put your eyes on it if you can. Because it's so important. Notice, behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. This is God that's doing the correcting. It isn't man. It isn't mama. It's God. God's doing the correcting. Now, it's God's business. Now, hear me. When God corrects you, He may use a man to do it. He may use a man to do it. It may be a man in a uniform. It may be a man in a uniform. Could be. He may use that. Hey, it could be a man in a suit, stands behind the pulpit, opens this book and preaches to you. Why? Because God's got to correct us. God has to correct us. And He's going to do it if we're His child. But it's God's business of doing it. And when the child of God gets straightened out, righteousness is exalted. Because when the child of God is right with God, then that child produces that which is right. God's honored. God's honored. And it, He's lifted up. Because God made the difference. Hey, we, we've all heard about people who, man, had a life of uh, atrocious sin and, and maybe a life of crime and maybe even went to prison, but somebody somewhere got to them and opened the Bible and took the Word of God and, uh, and testified to them and read it and witnessed to them and they trusted Christ as their Savior and it changed them completely. Amen. You know what that did? That exalted God. Because that one who was wrong found out what was right, got it corrected, got that relationship established, and righteousness was exalted. Amen. Made the difference. Made the difference. That's what God wants to do in you and I. All right? He wants to do that. He wants to make the child of God happy. I found as long as I was doing what's right, I was happy. I was happy. Now, and you know, I blamed a lot of things on my brother because it's mostly his fault, all right? No, not truthfully. I've done other things. I've done some things that uh, later on, you know, you, you've done these things and then you go, hmm, I wonder if anybody saw that. I better get out of here. I better get out of here. And, and you take off running. And then for the next days, you're because you've done wrong. You're not happy about it either. You're not happy about it. But happy is the man whom God corrected. When God corrects you, makes you happy. Makes you happy. Oh, I don't enjoy chasing it. And don't misunderstand the message. I don't enjoy chasing it. When I was a kid, I didn't enjoy getting a spanking. I never said, hey, Dad, I haven't had one in a couple of days. How about it? Just for fun. It wasn't fun. But can I say this to you? Made me a happy child. You know what? Made me a happy adult. As a Christian, God's correcting keeps me happy. As a child of God. Happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Let me finish this morning. Two things. If God's not correcting you, you might not be His child. If God's not correcting you, you might not be His child. <coughs> Preacher, I've heard you preach on those things. I've been doing those things for years, and I, nothing ever happens to me. Maybe you're not his child. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying maybe you've never been born again. 
Now, I didn't say he doesn't want you as his child. Because he does. He does. He wants you as his child. He sent his son to pay your sin debt. Right, right. To pay a debt you couldn't pay. Amen. And nobody else could pay for you, but he paid it. And he comes and he offers you the gift of eternal life. If you'll just trust him and call upon him. Ask him to save your soul. Right. You can become his child today. But I want to say to you, if you never get corrected by the Lord, maybe it's because you're not his child. I'd think about that. I'd be worried about that. I'd be concerned about that. I'd be concerned. Wouldn't want to go through life that way. He'll save you today if you'd come to him. Hey, if you're not getting corrected by God, and you, you're doing your own thing, and oh, living in open rebellion to the word of God, maybe you're not his child. Secondly, let me say this. If God's correcting you, don't fight. Don't fight. Get right. Get right. You want to be happy? Let him correct you. Let him correct you. Chastening's not enjoyable, but it's enjoyable to be right with God. Oh, it's enjoyable. He's correcting you. Don't fight. Don't despise, the Bible says, the chastening of the Lord. Get right. Get right. Do what you know you want to do. Let the hand of God for blessing be able to be back on your own. Okay, happy is the man whom God corrects. And it's a thrill to be corrected by him. But if he's correcting you, don't fight. If he's not correcting you, maybe you need to get in the family. Would you do that today? Would you stand, please, with every head bowed and every eye closed? As we get ready for the invitation time. Listen, it doesn't do any good for you to listen and God to convict your heart if you don't do something because of his convicting power. If he speaks to you, then you need to move. If he speaks to you, you need to move. If he speaks to you and he's convicted you somewhere in the message, and you need to you need to step out. You need to come and either kneel at one of these front steps or one of these front pews. Can't kneel. Have a seat there. And do business with God. Maybe you need to confess sin. Then confess it. Ask for forgiveness. May you know there's some things that aren't right. Then come get them right. And my friend, if you're here and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I'm pleading with you today. Would you trust Him today? Would you trust Him so just step out, walk down the aisle, meet me here at the front, and say, Preacher, I want to trust Christ. We'll let somebody take the Bible, show you exactly what you need to do. Listen, God's dealing with you. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Our Heavenly Father, I pray now you'd speak to every heart. Folks already come today. You've dealt with them. Lord, would you deal with all of us? Help us to see what we need. And Lord, folks need to move. Help them to move. If they're lost, help them to trust you today. Is there safe? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We sing this morning.